to another episode of RGM Garage. This week we're stepping away from the CR for a little bit and we're jumping on to the Rizzler and getting it ready for summer again. see I have a upper lift and the reason why I prefer the upper lift instead of a bench lift is the um, possibility to move the bike around as you do, just have to, excuse the noise needs a bit of oil but it's very easy to move the bike around and one of the other reasons is as you can see to work on the front end, all you gotta do is put the strap on the back attached to the actual lift instead of the arm that's provided with it and uh, raises the front up. Uh, if you don't put the strap on, it will raise the back up and if you put the attachment, the little arm that goes down here, down here um, and attach it to the swinging arm, will raise the whole bike up straight. Uh, and that gives a, a lot of possibilities. Uh, it's, it's easy to work on front end if you want, just raise the front end, take the front wheel off, uh, work on the brakes, which is what we are doing today, uh, changing the brake pads, or well, at least starting it today, I'm waiting for the parts to arrive, and um, if you want to take the sprocket out, you can just raise the back and work on the back wheel. Um, and uh, one of the other reasons I, I so much like it is, is I only have a small garage uh, and if I had a bench lift um, it would take a lot of space. With this uh, little upper lift it takes no space whatsoever and it's so easy for me to work on it. Um, so as I said this week I'm working on the Rizla. I'm getting the brake pads changed a uh, little more bits and bobs needs to be done on it um, give it a good clean give it a good overall look um, get it ready for MOT I'll try to get it done this week um, so this video might be only out on Friday and hopefully fingers crossed uh, she'll be on the road, roadworthy and I'll be able to do some runs and then I'll be able to give you guys some um, ride out videos. Um, so, yeah, gonna jump into it, gonna take these old pads off, uh, clean the calipers all around, and um, get it ready for the new pads. So, first job is to remove these two bolts off the, to be able to remove the caliper, and to do that, I believe. It is a 8mm or 8mm Allen key. So just gently. Now that the caliper is out, you want to use a banjo cord and just hang the caliper somewhere where you don't put too much stress on the brake pipe. Just so it stays nice and out the way um, and don't put too much stress on the, on the brake pipe. I 
and don't forget to remove the brake pipes from its links. Okay. One of the reasons why I'm taking the calipers off instead of just changing the pads, which is doable on this caliper. Uh, it's possible to just change the pads without removing the caliper but one of the reasons why I want to remove the caliper and I recommend you remove the calipers as well is see how much dirt is on this caliper uh, how much debris is on these pistons and uh, one thing I want to do is remove the pads uh, try to pump the pistons out slightly and then after that uh, I'm gonna get a bit of hot soap, um, hot water and soap and with a little old toothbrush I'm gonna try to clean this as fast as I can. Next step is remove the pumps. So for my next step, I have a bucket with just no bucket, ordinary bucket with water and soap and uh, old toothbrush. And my next step is to try to clean these pads, these um, calipers, as best as possible. So let's get into it. After a lot of rubbing and scrubbing and rinsing and cleaning up, uh, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of a dirty pad, a dirty caliper and a clean caliper. And as you see, uh, it's considerably better compare one to the other. One other thing that I didn't mention is you can get zip ties zip tie the calipers so they don't come out too much uh, then you press the brake uh, lever and pop the calipers out as you see that's dirty calipers um, dirty pots they called pots not calipers <laughs> uh, so that's the dirty pots uh, I don't know if you can see but 
that's dirty that's the clean pot that was inside so what I do is I'll put some zip ties uh, stopping him from coming out too much um, pop him out a little bit clean him up now my next step will be to push him back in ready for the new pots and um, just finish cleaning inside a little bit more see what else I can do in here or not uh, and then I'll jump into this pot so now that the pots are uh, inside so the flush with the caliper on both sides uh, there's a little bit more scrubbing required and um, hopefully that'll be it that'll be the last bit of, of this caliper and I'll have to jump onto the next caliper uh, and do the same and um, I had to switch to this soft brass uh, brush because the little toothbrush wasn't doing any work um, so yeah So now this one is uh, clean as best as possible. We set it aside, uh, we'll put a couple of zip ties in here um, so that when we press this um, pots here back inside, you won't push these ones out. So I'm gonna get into it, I'm gonna place the zip ties and um, put the caliper back into place, let it dry. Um, and wait for new parts to arrive so now that I have both calipers clean and loosely mounted on the caliper carrier or on the forks my next step my next step is to clean these rotors so I'll get you guys back in the stand and uh, very gently with uh, metal wool and fresh clean water with soap and uh, then just rinse it. So let's get back into it. Let's clean these rotors, make sure they have no contaminants, no oils, anything. Just give it a good could tidy up, good clean, and we should be good. So now that I have most of the brakes sorted, um, I have clean discs, clean uh, calipers, and the only thing that I'm missing now is new brake pads. So while we wait for that, uh, I'm gonna tackle some more jobs. And the first thing I'm gonna tackle today is this front hugger, which is cracked. So this happened because I left my brake disc lock 
this clock in the disc and moved the bike stupidly. Uh, so it caused to crack this hugger. So I'm gonna take it out, um, try to weld it on on behind. In behind we say welding iron, that's the name for it. Um, and uh, let's see what we can do with it. For me to remove this hugger, I will need to pop the wheel off. And it is finally out. So let's get it clean and um, let's get it repaired. So unfortunately it's um, 3 o'clock so I have to leave this for today. Um, here is the uh, front hugger. So I'm gonna have to leave it for today. I have to pull the bikes back in. Um, gonna go and grab my, get my little monkey from school, and uh, I'll be back at it tomorrow. So um, stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. So the first first task of today is to get this um, hugger cleaned, washed. So. Um, gonna get into it, got my bucket of water, uh, a bit of soap in it and uh, gonna start on to cleaning it and repairing it. So another day, another dollar as they say. Let's get into it.
Right, so all we done, you can still see the crack in there. Um, but now it's welded at the back. So on the back, as you can see, it's all stitched up. So the next step is to use the old zip ties from yesterday and melt it into it so that we give it a bit of strength. Um, I'm not going to repair the front, I'm just going to leave it as is because if I do so I would need to uh, completely paint this hugger again. So for the moment I'm just going to repair it at the back, uh, give it strength, make sure it doesn't completely crack and fall off the bike. Next step is to fill it with old zip ties. Right, so now we have successfully stitched the hugger and reinforced it. Uh, I'm sure it's not gonna just fall off and increase the crack. So that's the only reason to do this uh, and to give it a good clean as well. So I'm gonna put it back in the bike, um, but before that I'm just gonna clean up all around, uh, make sure it's all nice and tidy before before this goes in so let's put this one on and um, jump into the next task so just a quick look over and um, straight away you can see that These are fairly dirty, um, also down here a little bit, so just gonna give it a good clean. Um, after we clean this we're gonna grease this uh, axle again and uh, we're gonna put the wheel back in, oh, hugger, first the hugger then the wheel, then the brakes. Works are all nice and clean, and um, as I'm here, I can notice that this is the next upgrade required. This radiator is uh, completely mangled, full of debris, very dirty. The oil one is not as bad. Well, saying that um, quite blocked as well but so regarding that the next upgrade will be to change the radiators so if anyone's got a couple of radiators laying around for cheap 
please let me know. So with this done, just gonna jump straight in, put the hagger wheel and put everything back together, grease everything and get it ready for pots. So, fortunately the battery died, so I couldn't film everything I was doing, but off camera I have, let me show you, I have removed this, um, this side foot peg and um, gear, gear shift uh, sticker um, peg. I should ask, I should say, uh, the reason is the amount of play on this um, time joint. So, this is how much play is in it. So, this has to be replaced. The other reason is this bolts. This bolt is what attaches this plate onto the fairing. Let me show you on this side. So, as you see, this bolt here attaches this plate to the frame, and then the rear sets attached to the plate. So, basically, these bolts were loose very loose so both goes through it's got a washer it goes in the back spicer large washer so my next job is to get one of these heim joints out and um, oh, find one to replace this uh, it's seized in there as well so, first thing, take this out of here, take the joint out of here, then detach it from um, the shift rod. So, this is the last thing I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna do it off camera. Look. 
because my next thing to do is get ready and go to work so I'll leave you with this for today and um, with with the magic of video that's better so with the magic of video editing I'll be with you in just a second but will be continuation of tomorrow so I drop in a bit hello guys and welcome back it's Friday and I finally got a package delivered so let's open it up um, hopefully is what I think it is and uh, we're gonna mount it on the bike as I have only a couple of hours spare to get this done um, before I have to go get my monkey from school and go to work so I'm gonna utilize this couple of hours and um, get things done and finish editing this video so you guys can watch it so this is the package I just got um, set of uh, parts for the Rizzler. I went to I went with uh, Vesron, uh, however you pronounce it. Um, I don't know if they are any good. I hope they are. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Make sure things run properly. Uh, I like to grease the grease the pins and um, grease the plates, uh, and the, that was the reason why I cleaned them um, so that the parts don't get stuck um, and they they run freely. So first step, parts new parts and uh, all it is with these parts nice and easy just slide them in that's all you need to do uh, but before that I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit with a little brush just a little tiny bit in this little area where pin runs. That's all. That's all it needs. And uh, these little points. Don't overdo it so you don't end up with grease in your discs. You don't want that. For the last job of today and this week is to change the fluid, braking fluid. Um, 
and for that I just need to take this cap off um, remove the, fu the fluid from here uh, with the syringe if I have one I believe so and um, after that I have to bleed the system so I'll fill it up with new fluid new brake fluid dot four um, and undo the nipples and just work the fluid down until it comes out clear and uh, that's how you change the fluid on on the brake system on the motorbike So let me quickly pick you up and show you. Let's see how well this camera will be able to pick it up. But so basically, you can see the color of fluid. It's quite dark in here and uh, when you approach the side where the fluid was coming from is much lighter and that's when you know that you completely done it as you get up here dark lighter that's it so all it is to do now is to um, close this valve, which is, uh, remove this pipe and fill the level up to maximum and you leave it. You do not um, overfill the tank because this tank is what is going to tell you if uh, your pads are running low. So you fill it up to top and that's it and uh, the only time you need to fill it up is if you do a fluid change guys uh, for this week that's all I have time for and uh, as always I um, put in my mouth more than I can chew and um, that's all I have time for next week I will have to install a rear tire uh, on this bike I just been to uh, my MOT guy and um, he said that I'll have to change the tire, this, this won't do it. So I'm still not sure if I will change it by hand or if I'll take it to the shop, but uh, I'll surely be taking you with me. Um, and hopefully next week or the week after, uh, this will be on the road because I'm itching to go for a ride as well. Um, 
the good weather is there and um, that's all I have for you today so thank you for watching as always uh, comment on the box below what you think of my videos um, what would you like me to see doing uh, like subscribe and share the videos with your friends uh, I'm trying to get to a thousand viewers a thousand subscribers until uh, the end of this summer um, with your subscriptions is how I can afford to do these videos um, so please help me please share it and um, I hope you enjoy the videos so stay tuned for next week higher on the Jigster 1000 and a little couple more tidy ups to do and we'll be on the road soon so see you next week ride safe and take care of your bikes always if you can do it yourself thanks for watching